Okay, if she gave you non-compliance or an ignore or said something else, you don't want to throw in another compliance test. All right, so if you, let's say you hit a brick wall in a racing game, the correct move is not to press the gas pedal and just fucking spin your wheels into the wall, okay? The correct move is to back up, reestablish compliance, and then move forward again. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. And today I wanna to talk about the proper structure to set up your text messages in order to get optimal compliance, okay? In order to get the girl to agree to do whatever it is that you are asking, okay? Um, before we continue, if you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe below. Uh, new videos coming out every day at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you turn on the notification bell to get alerted of those new videos. So. What I used to do as a mistake, okay, and, I, and what I see a lot of guys doing in my, in my forums and things like this, is they're embedding um, multiple compliance tests into one uh, text, okay? Don't do that, first of all. Number two, uh, don't embed like the compliance test and then, and then say some shit afterwards, okay? Um, let me go, I'll go into some examples here. First of all, like backing up a little bit, compliance refers to does the girl go along with what you want to do or does, or does she not? Okay, so when you say on a, a dating app like Tinder, when you say, um, let's switch to text, what's your phone number? Okay, that's a compliance test. She can either send her phone number or she cannot. Over a regular text message, when you say, um, let's meet up Tuesday or, or you say, when are you free to meet up? Okay, that's another compliance test. Okay, all of game is compliance tests. The, the structure of my model, the core of my model is compliance tests. When you open, when you approach, a cold approach, she's going to be receptive or she's going to not be receptive. That's a compliance test. When you try to kiss the girl, when you try to make out, when you try to take the girl home from a, a club, when you invite her to hang out, okay, all the way up to even when you go to have sex, like all these different things, is, is she going to see you again? These are all compliance tests. So I had a guy yesterday um, in my mastermind. He showed me a text, okay, where he is, um, he basically was asking, he was embedding multiple compliance asks, okay, in one message. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys do this. Okay, so let me uh, take a look real quick. Okay. Um, okay. So the, the first mistake, he said, okay, remember my video framing dates straight to the house? You want to say, the structure is you first find out when they're free. Okay, so when are you free? She's like this day and this day, and you want to meet up as soon as possible. Okay, let's plan for Monday at seven o'clock, okay? Then you move on to the wine thing. How we saying you can split a bottle of wine in my new place. So what he did, all in one text, he said, like he said, do you like wine? Okay, that's, that's the right way to do it. She said, yes. And then he said, cool, we could split a bottle of wine on my new balcony. The view is one of the best in Denver. When are you free to meet up? And uh, the, the problem there is, first of all, you want, you want to get like wins, okay? You want to get like these little micro compliance steps, okay? So he got one win by saying, do you like wine? And she said, yes, okay? Now, Robert uh, Caldini, who wrote the one of the best persuasion books ever written called Persuade, Pers no, what was it called? Influence, okay? Then like 20 years later, he put out uh, the sequel to it called Persuasion. And he, he said that if you tee people up and bring them into the frame and get them like a little yes that brings them into the frame, then they're much, much, much more likely to comply to the next request, okay? So when, um, when you say, do you like wine? She says, yes, she's already being drawn into the frame. But his mistake was saying, we could split a bottle of wine at my new place, okay? And then, uh, and this guy, like, this guy isn't a newbie or anything. Like, I'm not gonna say his name, but I'm not like calling him out here. It's just like a minor adjustment that needs to be made, but it will make a big difference, okay? But he's saying, he's basically inviting her to the house, which is a, a compliance leap. And then he's also saying, when are you free to meet up? Okay, so now she hasn't even committed to any plans yet. 
And now she also has like the added pressure of going to the house. Okay. So instead you would say, when are you free to meet up? You get the day and time locked in. Then you say, do you like wine? Yes. Now you have a day and time locked in. You find out she likes wine. Now that is the point where you say, cool, we can split a bottle of wine at my new place. Do you prefer red or white? And then that's called the decision close in sales. The, giving them two options where in either option, they both come to your house. Okay. Oh, I like white wine. Cool. Well, I'll see you Monday at seven. Oh, I like red wine. Cool. I'm, I'll see you Monday at seven. Okay. Oh, I'm not safe. I'm not, I don't feel safe coming to a stranger's house. Oh, I don't go to a stranger's house on the first date. Oh, uh, well, I'm really laid back. Don't worry. Bring pepper spray for that worried. Okay. That's, that's how you deal with that in the sequence. Okay. So don't embed multiple compliance tests into one statement. Okay. Um, the other thing that a lot of guys do, and I have used to this myself is you don't put the compliance test at the end of the text. Okay. So here's an example. <clears throat> um, let's, let's talk more on WhatsApp. It's easier. Um, let me think basically like, like if you, if you don't like finish the sentence, like this, this, I'm, I'm thinking of like the number close on online dating apps example. If you don't finish the sentence with the, with the request. So I always finish when I'm asking for the number, I, I, I explicitly say, what is your number? Cause if you say like, let's switch to, to text message or let's, let's switch to WhatsApp. Sometimes they'll just be like, okay, sounds good. And then like, there's this giant delay again until you, until they see your message again, if they ever do see your message again. So you need to explicitly state what is your number at the end. Okay. I, I always say, let's talk more over text. It's easier. Smiley face. What's your number? Question mark. Okay. But I've seen guys like my mastermind guys say like, um, yeah, you could send me your number and, and, uh, we could talk more over text. And then they say something else at the end of the text. And since the compliance test wasn't at the end of the sentence, or maybe they'll say, um, we could switch, we could switch text, send me your number. And then they say something else in a second text, like, um, by the way, this and that, and lots of times, okay. And this is just human nature. Okay. But I think girls are a little bit more, uh, prone to do this is they'll just respond to like the last thing you said, whether it be the last item of the, the one text, or if it's like two texts in a row, they'll just respond to the second one. So I always want to make sure that the compliance test is explicit. Like what is your number? And that it comes at the end of the, of the sentence and that there's not a text after it. Okay. Then number three, the other big mistake is that guys will add another compliance test when their previous compliance test either got ignored or, um, like maybe, maybe the girl responded, but didn't respond to that compliance test, or maybe she hadn't responded to the text yet at all. And guys will add on another compliance test. And I always use the, the analogy that if you're playing a video game, a racing game, right. And you ran into a wall, okay. A, a wall signifies either non-compliance or, or I should add into this example. If she gave you non-compliance, okay. If she gave you non-compliance or an ignore or said something else, you don't want to throw in another compliance test. All right. So if you, let's say you hit a brick wall in a racing game, the correct move is not to press the gas pedal and just fucking spin your wheels into the wall. Okay. The correct move is to back up, reestablish compliance and then move forward again. So how this, how this translates in, like, let's say the, let's say you're like, um, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter what, what the example, if you ask the girl for something and she either says no, or she, um, if you ask the girl for something and she says no, or she, um, you know, just ignores, you don't want to follow in with another request and follow in with, okay, well tell me like comply to this thing as well. Okay. So to sum up, do not embed compliance statements in a message. Okay. Where it's not like the last item, do not send messages after the compliance statement this is over text. Um, do not, uh, if you get non-compliance or an ignore, do not ask for yet another piece of compliance. Okay. The whole model is you ask for compliance. If it's positive, if she's receptive, then you move forward along, along this straight line that I've defined for you. Okay. If 
you get an ignore or non-compliance, <clears throat> you deal with that accordingly at that step. Okay, typically by showing indicators of disinterest or answering objections or whatever. And then once you get the compliance at that step, then and only then do you move forward. Okay. So that was a bit technical. I hope that made sense. Uh, leave questions in the comments below. Um, I also wanted to cover a really quick uh, review that was that was really nice for the Chrono Pickup system. Okay. This dude said, what I've learned after one week implementing Chrono Pickup. This shit fucking works. Three hookups and new fuck buddies within a week. Uh, the 10 second orgasm technique is fucking legit. At first I was frustrated how many girls were flaking, but when you run this much volume, it literally does not matter. And I haven't even set up the other four tinders yet. Okay, Cause I encourage guys to run five tinders at once, as long as, as well as a bumble and hinge. So you're running seven profiles. That's all explained in the Corona pickup product. Don't work too many leads at one time. I was stressing myself out because I felt I needed to set up five dates every day. Once I got a couple of fuck buddies, I relaxed and able to enjoy the process much more. And my week is still filled with dates. My results skyrocketed when I stopped going really sexual from the beginning. I was scaring off a lot of girls who would have been down but just didn't want to get sexual right away or over text. Overall, I can't believe how effective this is and how much fucking time I wasted following RSD. John Anthony is the fucking man. Okay? And I get shit like this all the time. This is in my mastermind form, but I, but I hear stuff like this all the time. I get emails like this all the time. I build my products and my systems to be extremely straightforward and as efficient, effective, and optimized as possible. Okay? Um, right now, Corona Pickup is still under 100 bucks. The price will be going up at some point in the near future. Uh, coronapickup.com if you're interested in that. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Share if you found value. <clears throat> and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care. So do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run No doubt, son, this is not just about fun We will not be